Hey, left, right out. I'm going to do a Ukraine update just because it's been in the news a little bit as of late. Um, so Zelensky supposedly rang the bell on a stock exchange, um, which I was in the news. I didn't even pay attention because I'm looking at the financial markets and I don't give a crap who rings the bell. But it seems odd that he's ringing the bell with supposedly all the stuff. What we're told is all going on. To me, <clears throat> the war is semi. It's pretty much over. You have skirmishes and very, you know, actual fighting. But that gets in long to, uh, to my other points here. One, Russia has come out and said they haven't really fully achieved all their goals, apparently. Uh, but, you know, there's other work being done over there. Like I said in months ago that they, you know, the next step would be some of these to have uh, some of these provinces to referendum themselves into Russia. <clears throat> um the interesting thing is there was another article, and this is what I wanted to talk about a little bit more, or to like kind of go down this train of thought uh, about how the West pretty much stymied any kind of peace deals between Russia and Ukraine. And how they did that was one, assuring Zelensky and these these um, other Ukrainian, uh, the other Ukrainian leadership that they would uh, back them. And essentially that's what we have. We've given them equivalent to like, I don't know how many years of their own military budget, a lot. And who knows where that money goes? <clears throat> because if you, I mean, if you actually hear some of our own representatives talk about this money, there's no real checks on it. They get very vague answers. The money goes, and who knows how many villas are being bought? Which that's another thing. So I've got something in my hand. So on that, not to go into another rabbit hole, uh, there was some interesting news that came out of Italy about. Um, so Zelensky has a village, or a villa, not a village. He might have a village there. I don't know. He's got a villa there somewhere. And uh, there are some Russians that are pretty, basically renting it out from him, I guess. But he was under a lot of criticism in um, in Italy over this. And I don't know if that story made it over here to the States. I haven't seen it. <clears throat> but, but it goes to show you, I mean, a lot of these guys have, you know, numerous estates elsewhere and just to me it I don't, it seems pretty hairy it seems pretty fishy not that you can't have vacation home somewhere but we've seen this story play out with some other leaders throughout history or recent history um but anyway so you look at the tens of billions of dollars that have gone over there and you can't help but think without that the, that funding one we'd been all well, well better off or we'd all be better off over here but two how many pe people's lives would be saved? How many people's lives would be saved? I'm sorry, I changed venues, had to go somewhere else. How many people's lives would be saved if there was a forced or the resources for Ukraine to wage war, whether that be weaponry funds um, or dollar funds and to get whatever oil and gas or to, to keep their industry because their industries have shut down uh, in, the, in various parts of it. But if those resources weren't there, um, they'd be forced to the table to negotiate peace. Um, if not in the beginning, earlier in the beginning, within the last few months. Now with this, pre you know, this pretty much um, in perpetuity backing of them is created a never ending war. It's like we're almost trying to create a new Vietnam for Russia or maybe a new Afghanistan for them even though it's not going to be the case because ethnically or, you know, the um, culture there is a little bit different and you're going to have that Eastern part going to be sympathetic to Russian regime, despite what people are saying. Um, they want to, Crimea wants to be part of Russia. They, they, they voted for it. And I don't care what our media says. I mean, this is just the facts of it. And it, it, you need to be truthful when you're looking into assess a situation and, and our media's, uh, willfully, um, they're not even willfully ignorant. They're just pushing a certain agenda. But anyway, so we think about that, not only in terms of Ukrainian and Russian lives, but think about it in terms of economic devastation that has occurred throughout the West now in the lives that it's impacting there. Like how, how much better would we be off if we were just, if not brokered a peace deal with them? be the neutral third party but there's too many intermingled political figures here with ties there and money um and ambition uh for in ukraine that it, it would never happen so they'd rather see tens of thousands of people die 
and people suffer than to give in to that. And we're seeing another level now of where, you know, what we're told over here is that these we're going to sanction them, we're going to do this, we're going to we're going to bring them to their their knees, we're going to win, help them win the war. It's been the exact opposite. And despite what the alphabet networks have been telling you, despite what even our three letter agencies are, are releasing to us, like what I heard something that Russia's buying what, from Intel community recently that Russia's buying shells from North Korea. Well, I, I doubt that. North Korea doesn't seem to be able to manufacture anything of value, let alone shells that would be that the Russia would use. I mean, I mean, maybe there's already some established trade there, but and I don't, you know, so who knows? Who knows? But I, I, I highly doubt. I'm very skeptical of that report. And from everything that I've seen coming from w within Russia or the news that have come out of there and our own news, to me, what in looking at our markets compared to what's going on in their markets and, and listening to people that actually go and shop there and because um, they live there, they, they're talking about their budgets and whatnot. Here's what's happened. The, where the ruble was supposed to crash. It didn't. It got it strengthened. It forced them to continue to de-dollarize, um, which another interesting factoid recently, the um, currency pairs over there is like the first time ever that the ruble won traded more volume than a ruble dollar um, over, over there. So the, it just shows you continued ties between Russia and China. But anyway, back to the main point is that when you look over there during this whole event, uh, besides like certain Western goods that are over there, food prices and and fuel prices seem to be pretty stable over there, if not you know gone down a little bit. Um, seems like their production. I mean, like besides like what do we take? What, what happened there? McDonald's closed, Starbucks or whatever. Everything else <clears throat> seems to be not too bad over there, comparative to when you look over here in the West, where we had soaring fuel prices which i understand like and i've talked about it's, it's a monetary phenomenon but when you have we are told one thing by politicians we are we're delivered another we're going to cripple them in fact we're crippling ourselves so not only do we have horrible monetary policy that's built up over a number of years but here we go hampering entire industries that are lifeblood the lifeblood of our own economic system the energy sector and that's not just us, that's the Western, or that's your Europe as well, especially Western Europe. Um, and and not to mention, you know, energy, but food when it comes to fertilizer stuff, which we, you know, get a lot from Ukraine and Russia, that stuff's offline. And we're not, we didn't build into our battle plan. Now, apparently there's not very good planners going on there a reasonable secondary option for these things or a backup option in especially Europe you're seeing them flail I mean it's bad I mean in just recently Nord Stream 1 is being cut off by Putin or Russia and it is a strategic move I mean if these guys are going to land bass Russia and they're you know threatening them with whatever price you know screw them we're going to and Russia said it they're we'll deal with that, somebody else <clears throat> And there's plenty of people out there that will buy this stuff. It's energy. And there's already bilateral agreements with Russia and the various nations we've talked about before. Setting up to de-dollarize that part of the world. I mean, it's incredible the amount of moves that are being that are happening internationally. They're not being well reported in this country. Uh, anyway, I don't know where else. I, I was going to go off on something else, too with regards to this um but essentially we're we are enabling the killing of even more people we're enabling these the or, or we the west are hurting our own people by these policies they're not really based on principle or anything even though that's what they're 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 saying but um but it doesn't do us any good and in fact it's done the opposite of what we've been told it's supposed to hurt russia and strengthen us and in fact it strengthened russia in their ties with other countries and hurt us in fact it's almost irreparable in some instances when we talk about what's going on internationally when it comes to uh, certain markets like i've said the dollar and whatnot but energy markets and food and also you know we're over here 
I don't know if you heard this, I don't know if it's been reported, but there's a military exercise going on in India, which we were participating in, but then they were also participating in a Russian one, which had us, or the Pentagon anyway, kind of asking them like, hey, we you shouldn't be doing that. Well, who are they siding with? Well, so far in this conflict, they have aligned themselves, at least economically, with Russia and the Chinese. And you're talking about one of the lo most populous countries in an up-and-comer, and that's India. So I'm just saying that things aren't looking so hot when it comes to this, and we should rethink our policy when it comes to dealing with Russia and to try to find some kind of alignment with them. When it comes to the Russian-Ukrainian war, we should not be funding one side or the other. We should be the peace brokers and implore them to come to the table. And yeah, Russia's probably going to take that eastern part. But you can save Ukraine and you can save uh, what is left of any kind of relationship that could possibly be. Anyway, peace.